To be brutally honest with you guys, I wasn't really looking forward to the first week of Chapter 2 of the Tides of War for one main reason. The focus was always going to be around Squad Conquest. When I read up on how the mode was going to work, I couldn't figure what DICE was planning to do to differentiate the game mode from regular domination. Both modes feature three flags that you can capture, smaller areas of the map are being used, and there's a big focus on infantry gameplay. And to make matters worse, Squad Conquest was pitched as just an 8v8 game mode. So I assumed the games would be very lacklustre, and to be honest, quite boring. However, I was totally wrong. The game mode is actually really, really fun. Now, to begin with, it's worth noting that the explanation for the Squad Conquest game mode that was listed on the Battlefield website earlier this week is not actually correct. The game mode does not have attacking and defending teams, and the spawning is not restricted to just your HQ. I spoke to Ludwig, who is the developer who worked on the mode and the balancing of the maps for it. He explained that was a miscommunication. Squad Conquest is standard Conquest, scaled down to 8v8, using smaller map areas and a reduced number of capture points. But vehicles come into the mix as well. You can play the mode on three different maps, Rotterdam, Hamada and Arras, and of the three, I think I'd put Hamada right at the top. Considering the fact that I pretty much hate the Hamada map on Standard Conquest, or Conquest Assault as it is for Battlefield 5, it's kinda nice to actually like Hamada on a different game mode. The area chosen on Hamada is the Temple Ruins location, so that's the E and F flag locations in a Standard Conquest match. And that means there's a lot of tight alleyways and routes that are flanked by the larger outside roads. Flags A and C, they're located on the two exterior structures, and then the B flag sits on the floor of the temple, surrounded by high walls and vantage points, which makes it ideal for an infantry ambush. All the flags feature lots of fortification points, meaning if you intend to try and defend the flag, you've got ample cover, it's just that you've got to build it. And I'm going to come back to fortifications later on in the video, because I think they're extremely important in this game mode. Now the centre of the map is almost infantry only, with the routes becoming elevated and out of reach for the single vehicle that you're able to spawn in. Vehicle support is basically around the edges of the temple, with the play zone using the existing roads. That allows vehicles to flank right around the action, and perhaps back cap a flag, forcing the enemy team to make a different move. There's a huge amount of vertical gameplay on offer on this map in this location, and I think that's why that I actually like it so much. The area creates this kind of tension during infantry gunfights, since so many other players are likely to hear your guns firing and come and try and find you. Vehicles can have an impact, but it's really only limited to the external two flags, since venturing onto the B point would likely result in them getting blown up into smithereens. Next we have the Rotterdam map, and this is actually the smallest of the three different layouts. It uses the left hand side of the canal, and mostly the three flags line up right down the middle of the map. It's a linear battle this one. Long lines of sight on this map make it ideal for snipers or assault players with semi-auto rifles, but once you actually reach the flag locations, again you're looking at these tight, frantic gameplay scenarios similar to Hamada, which won't suit those weapons. Your squad composition needs to be quite balanced for this map. The A flag uses the plaza location, usually the place you run right through as you spawn into a match of standard conquest when you spawn as a British soldier. B point sits right underneath a metro bridge, and it can be turned into a mini fortress with fortifications, and the C flag sits all the way down the other end of the long alleyway, right beside the White House, and this is the flag that the Allies will actually take first. If you're familiar with Conquest on this map, basically the spawns have kind of flipped over for Squad Conquest. 
Naturally, most of the action on this map happens in the middle of the three flag points and thereabouts. That's the B point. This is where the two teams at the start of a round will clash together, and it kind of becomes a bit of tug and war, pushing backwards and forwards against each other until one team wins out and pushes up on the other one to one of the end of the two flags. There are three distinct lanes that you can use, middle, upper and canal. Canal doesn't offer that much cover, but there are things there for you to use. Middle is quite dark and can be ideal for a push forwards, but you do have to be aware of waiting enemies as well. And upper is slightly more open than middle, but it doesn't feature much cover and it actually features less than what Canals does, in my opinion. Being honest, I rarely used anything other than the middle lane to attack and defend here. One armoured transport vehicle can be spawned per team on this map, so protecting that for added firepower is essential. Any vehicle, really, in Squad Conquest basically needs to be escorted around the maps to make sure it stays alive. Of the three maps, Rotterdam was probably my least favourite. Not because the game mode doesn't work very well, it does work very well on this map, but I just don't really like Rotterdam. It lacks atmosphere, it just feels like a dead map to me. And I don't know if that's just to do with the audio or the fact that if not much is happening, it's really, really quiet. I just don't really like it as a map and therefore didn't really enjoy this one. And lastly, we have Arras. Three flags here create a triangle, with the B flag point being a pivot for the map. From B, you get this elevated view of both the routes to A and C flags, which sit close to both of the team's respective HQs, and you get a great read of the main foot traffic that will be moving between C and B and A and B. The path between A and C is much more open, and this is a good route for the vehicle on each team to try and watch and control. Infantry can use it, but they need to stick close to the soft cover like bushes and trees to make sure they're not picked off by enemies a little bit too easily. A good route to take actually is the riverbed. It's the lowest point across between the two flags. A flag on this map is the bridge and the house right next to it. There's not a huge amount of cover here, but using fortifications you can construct much better defenses. B point being that pivot for the whole map, doesn't have a lot of cover on it. It makes it very easy to attack, but it's much harder to defend it. That means it changes hands a lot during a match, so you shouldn't expect to try and hold on to it for too long. It's specifically designed to be the point that you can push on to or fall back to in an attempt to gain or hold ground. Because it sits so much higher than the rest of the map, if it were easy to hold, the team holding it would gain too much of an advantage. So it's nice to see DICE have balanced this one quite nicely. And the C flag is the water mill. And with that location basically being a compound, I'd say it's actually easier to defend than the A point. And again, lots of fortifications here to armour up even more. Now, I've mentioned fortifications quite a few times during this video. Since DICE introduced them into Battlefield 5, I've always thought they were really cool, but often in the large-scale game modes like Conquest or Breakthrough, they kind of become forgettable, and often they get destroyed before you can really make use of them. Here, in a much smaller play area with players moving around all the time and the limited use of explosives because vehicles are far less common and there are of course less players, fortifications become a really important part of the game mode. Actively blocking off lines of sight onto objectives, building protective walls around the objectives and denying enemies access to areas by putting up barbed wire can really change the flow of the maps quite quickly although I'd say they're most effective on the Hamada map. Because it's already a very blocky map in its design, with lots of buildings offering that walled cover, adding sandbag walls to the open areas and blocking off different pathways can really slow down the enemy team's approach. The B flag is covered in sandbag wall locations and barbed wire positions, which naturally force players to think a little bit more when they're up in place. Is there going to be someone hiding behind that wall? Should I go past it and risk getting snagged on the barbed wire when an enemy pops out? It really plays into the flow of the mode, and it changes things up. And because the flow of the mode is that much faster than standard conquest, each time you come back round to a flag, you usually are faced with a completely different look and scenario than the time before. It will have likely been changed, maybe being built up, or having been torn down with explosives. 
Overall, I'm genuinely surprised and quite impressed with Squad Conquest. As I said at the start of the video, before this chapter started, I wasn't confident that the mode was going to keep me engaged, but I've just finished playing three solid hours of it, and likely I'm going to be going back in later to complete the Tides of War challenges for the week so I can unlock the new SMG. The challenges for the week, by the way, all revolve around Squad Conquest, so you're going to have to play the mode if you want the new gun, but you shouldn't be disappointed with the game mode. With it being a limited time one, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing this return in the future, maybe in another chapter later on in the year. I really enjoyed playing this game mode. But there you are, that's Squad Conquest. Thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you leave your thoughts and opinions on the game mode down below in the comments section. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed to the channel already. Put notifications on too so you don't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.